Hey YouTubers and welcome to Bevan's Builds and today we're going to be discussing some of the quick really quick basics on uh, prepping plumbing um, in underground for my pole barn. <clears throat> now what I wanted to kind of discuss this is a very small area and I don't even know if I'll ever even put a bathroom in my pole barn but what it is is I thought you know what before they pour the concrete it's cheaper and easier to put in some rough plumbing now than it would be to try and do it later. Now, what my intention is, is I plan on having a 6x10, uh, what I call a mechanical room over here in the corner of the pole barn. That will have my electrical panel, it'll also have my furnace in it. Now, I don't know if I will ever do the actual bathroom, <clears throat> but again, like I said, if I decide I want to put a bathroom out here, I mean, right there's my house, so it's not like it's that far of a walk. Uh, but if I ever do decide to do it, here it is. Um, now, the first thing I want to talk about is drain lines. Typically your drain line, your main drain line, your sewage line, your city sewer line is going to be a four inch line. What I'm doing here is I'm using a three inch line. <clears throat> Again, it's because this is not a residence, it's just a garage. And for around, I think it's $182, they sell a uh, holding tank. It's a thousand gallon holding tank. And you can use that for your septic tank. It's just a matter of getting it installed. And uh, for that 1,000 gallon tank, it's only a 3 inch in and a 3 inch outlet. So that's why I went with the 3 inch line. Now what you see here is I have two lines coming over here. And I have this line coming up and then I have this pipe coming up over here. Now what that actually is, is this is supposed to be my toilet. That is if I ever wanted to put in a shower. And this is supposed to be my clean out line. And what I'll probably end up doing um, once the floor is poured, if I ever did do a bathroom again, I would run that three inch line up and then I would use that for the drain for the sink, which I would probably put over here. Uh, and then this pipe against the wall over here is uh, the vent, which I could also use this as my main vent. But that brings us to another thing, venting, ventilation. You have to have good venting on your plumbing system. Now, with that venting, Part of that means you can't use 90 degree bins when you're doing your rough-in plumbing. Anything that is wastewater has to be on a 45. So let me come down here and I can show you what I'm referring to. So this is my toilet fitting, which like I said, I have a, a rough cap in for that. But anyway, the main pipe comes back, you go to a 45, and then you go into the three inch, which this whole line is three inch because your toilet has to be a three inch line. Um, that's something else I'll quickly discuss is your toilets all have to be three inch drains and then your shower should be a two inch drain and your sink should be, well, me personally, I use a two inch drain, um, but your sink can actually be an inch and a half. I, I prefer two inch. But anyway, um, as you come through the 45 there, you have what you call a three and three Y. And then from that, you go into the main drain line. And then I have the same thing over here for the shower, which this is a three, three, and two. And that's a Y also, which is at a 45. And then that 45 comes up to another 45 here. And then that follows along over here to my P-trap. And then this is actually the actual shower drain where it would go, which is that have to be cut off and then the shower drain will get installed into that. Um, <clears throat> now that we're talking about the showers and the drains and all that, this two by four here, is a representation of my imaginary six foot wall, um, which I'd probably end up scooting it back a little bit, but I'd still put that there just for good general guide. And this is why I wanna discuss this imaginary wall of if I ever did put this in as a bathroom. When you're putting in your drains, your toilet has to be a minimum, if I can get it over there, there we go. Your, the back of your toilet needs to be at 12 inches. I'm about 12 and a half. So that gives you plenty of room between the toilet uh, holding tank on the back of the toilet and the wall and then i wanted it at least 12 inches on my drain for my shower now the other thing that you have to take into consideration especially when it comes to toilets now this shower what it is is i was considering it to be uh 30 inch wide <clears throat> so to the center of this would be 15 inches mind you uh <laughs> when I say the center of that is 15 inches, I'm imagining that I'm going to have a 6 inch wall over here. So I've already accounted for that. So actually the full length of this is 21 to the center of the drain for the shower for the P-trap. Now the other thing that you have to take into consideration is now you want to take and come over 15 inches. This is, mind you, I'm discussing minimums. So this is my 15 inch mark from the center or from the edge of my pipe here. And the reason that I want to talk about that is because you have it, you have to have at least 15 inches from the center of your toilet drain 
to either side for whether it be the sink or the shower. And just like everything I did here, I actually went way overkill. I like to have plenty of room. I am 18 inches uh, from the center of the toilet to over here. So I have plenty of clearance between a shower and a toilet if I ever decide to go ahead and put that in there. Like I said, the reason I'm discussing a lot of these things is I found it very difficult to find any of this information online and on YouTube for that matter. Uh, and because I do know the general codes, I thought I would go ahead and give a quick discussion on those. The last thing I wanna discuss is a back to the venting, um, is your flow. None of your pipes can be level. I mean, obviously the vent pipe is gonna be level and that's, that's purpose, I mean, that, that's supposed to be. But all your drain lines have to be on a, what they call a quarter inch rise. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they call it a quarter inch rise. I always considered it because it's a drain and it's going out, it'd be a quarter inch decline. But anyway, they call it a quarter inch rise. And what that means is every quarter or every foot, you should have a quarter inch of rise in that pipe in order for your water and, and uh, sewage to flow correctly. Now me, I'm a bit of an overkill person. I'm probably more like half an inch, <laughs> I think, uh, of rise per uh, foot like between half an, half an inch and three quarters of an inch. But let me see if I can get down here and show you what I'm talking about. So well, here's my level. And it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see there's two lines in there. This first line in the center would be true level. The second line actually gives you your quarter inch of rise. So if I was to do this to the minimum code standards, I would want my bubble to sit right there. And that would give me my quarter inch per foot per rise. But like I said, I'm a little bit of an overkill type of person, and I'm more like three quarters of an inch per, or per foot per rise. But that's just how I am. I like to do things a little over the top. Um, but anyway, I believe that is everything I wanted to discuss. I believe that gives you all your basic rough end measurements. Uh, the only last thing I do want to mention is your main sewer line as it comes out from underneath your foundation. It should be 18 inches below grade. Uh, at least that's where it is where I'm at. That does depend on different uh, where you live and your different uh, environments and such that you live in. But the reason that it has to go down that far is to prevent freezing of your lines. But again, uh, it's got to be 18 inches from the top to the bottom or to the top of the pipe to the top of the grade of the uh, dirt. Now, in some areas, I believe they require up to 30 inches. But <clears throat> again, here where I'm at anyway, it's 18 inches. So. Anyway, I hope this helps for anybody that plans on doing any projects like this. And again, I don't know if I'll even be uh, installing this or doing anything with it, but I'd rather do it now than later because it would be a lot more expensive later. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to say thank you for coming to Bevan's Builds. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share below. Don't forget to check out my other channel if you like Lego. And we'll see you next time on Bevan's Builds.